Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And today, well, it is the end of the year, which is, wow, <laughs> I don't know what happened to 2022, but I'm almost kind of happy that we're moving into a new year. And of course, my awesome co-host is Tom Campbell. Um, we thought, I know we talk about this a lot, but we look at the difference between New Year's resolutions and the New Year's intentions. And intentions have much more power towards them New Year's resolution seems to be something that we stick with for a month, a few days. <laughs> we tend to uh, we tend to let go of our New Year's resolutions because they're not about being and they're more about doing. And when we look at intentions, then that's those are kind of choices we make, and it's our choices that set up how we are going to be. So. Welcome to the show, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. It's always my pleasure to be here. Yeah, it boils down to how you how you define these words. You know, if we if we talk about an intention, that can be an intellectual thing too. You know, oh, I intend to lose fifty pounds, and I intend to do this and that, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it. But when when you say intention, you're talking about a something deeper than the intellect. Yes. You see, the intellect is, for most, for most everybody, the intellect tends to be dominated by ego and by uh, belief. In other words, it's dominated by fear. Most people have a lot of fear inside. And we pick that fear up from our families, from our culture, just from being here, just from living here. And that in that uh, that intellectual channel then mirrors those those uh, that ego and those beliefs so you tend to tell yourself the things you want to hear like oh i'm going to lose 50 pounds this year <laughs> you know you tell yourself that but it's you saying it because you'd like to do it mm. it's you saying it because that's kind of a wish and you think you should do it and that's different than what you're calling an intention, which is you being authentic, honest with yourself, and you really, at a deep, fundamental level, are going to do it. You know, you're at a fundamental level. You, It's not only that I should do it, but I am going to do it. It's you being authentic, not you saying what you know the ego and you would like to hear. Right. Or making a wish, you know, you can drop a coin in the wishing well and make a wish, but there's almost no power in that because it all comes from the intellect. Mm. Changing the future, changing future probability uh, has has a few different, a few things that make it from, you know, the intellect being powerless, pretty much. I mean, the intellect would still do a little something, but it not much it doesn't really move much and the things you have to do to, to actually modify the future which is what you're talking about when you're going to lose 50 pounds you're modifying the future or i'm going to be kinder and gentler or i'm you know not going to be so self-centered or whatever it is you want to do <clears throat> how you want to improve yourself you have to one Get out of your intellect into an intuitive mode mm -hmm. where it's just you inside, not your ego and not your belief. And you have to focus that intent with clarity. You have to focus in it with some energy, in other words, with some emotion. You have to really want to do it, not just, oh, it's a good thing to say. I'll pretend that I want to do it and that'll make me feel better. That's the that's the one that doesn't work so well. So first you have to have 
clarity. You have to have focus. All of your mental energy, every scrap of it, has to be focused on just that accomplishment. And like I say, you have to have some energy in it, some emotion. You really want to do this. And if you can do those things along with having this come from the core of you, not from your ego, not from your fear, then it'll work. It'll just work. You'll do it. Those 50 pounds will be gone because you're committed to it. You know, I, I noticed uh, a long time ago that, uh, you know, yeah, what do they say? You know, in a, in a universe, you know, far, far away or whatever. <laughs> uh, once when I was a, I was a young, uh, a young guy, I, I smoked. Cigarettes. I started smoking when I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, you know. And what a I, rebel. <laughs> yeah, I smoked up through uh, probably, you know, up through college. Wow. And then I got to a point where I didn't want to, you know, smoke anymore. It seemed like, you know, why carry a bad habit that stinks and, you know, annoys other people and so on. It just seemed like a good thing not to do. And I really wanted to stop. So I just did. And there was no withdrawal, no symptoms. I never wanted to, oh, have that cigarette, you know, after dinner or whatever, like smokers do. It just stopped and went away. And then some four or five years later, I was in a crowd of people and everybody smoked in that group. And I decided, well, I, you know, I'll, I'll join them. And I smoked not much, but a little bit, not very much. You know, mainly it was, it was bumming cigarettes from other people. You know, I didn't actually go out and buy any because I, I really didn't want to smoke that much. <laughs> but then I said, no, this is stupid, Tom. Why don't you just stop that? You don't need to do this because everybody else is doing it. And I had terrible withdrawals. Uh -huh. Oh, then I wanted to smoke. Huh. And that's because the second time, the first time was from the being level. I really just wanted to quit. I saw it was a dumb idea, dysfunctional, and there wasn't really any advantage in it. So quit. The second time I was upbraiding myself for, for starting smoking again, just to be, you know, like everybody else. Hmm. And it was not the right reason. That was from the intellect. It wasn't because I really wanted to quit. It's because I thought I shouldn't be doing it. Mm. And I noticed I had, you know, this, this uh, went on for a year or two years. Wow. This thing about smoking. And it occurred to me that the difference is that if you really want, stop, you want to really want to lose weight or stop smoking or any other thing, if it comes from the being level, you'll just do it. And you won't have withdrawals or any of the other problems with it. You'll just do it. And if you are working from your intellect, you're going to struggle and struggle and struggle and even really not ever really do it. You know, do it for a little while and then you, you know, you fall off the wagon and you do it for a little while more and you just aren't committed at a deep level even if your intellect thinks you are. Oh, it's just so hard for me to quit. It's just so hard for me to lose, you know, that 50 pounds. And I've talked to other people since then, and they've had the same, you know, the same experience. That if you really want to do something that you're addicted to, if you really want to at the being level, you can just walk away and the withdrawals are not that bad. And I was talking to people who were into, you know, drugs that were um, addictive, recreational addictive drugs. And they said the same thing. When they got to the point that they just didn't want to do it anymore, they didn't have any withdrawals from it. But if they didn't, if they quit because they thought they should quit, they had terrible withdrawals and seemed to keep going back. Hmm. So I think that's true of everything, you know, not just, you know, not just uh, New Year's resolutions, but just in general, if we want to change something or change the way we are, 
we have to be 100% committed to that change as opposed to letting our intellect say, oh, it'd be nice if I did this, or I should do this. I'd be healthier if I lost 50 pounds. You know, I'd be, you know, that just won't work. Hmm. You have to come to the conclusion at a deep level. And when you do, things change more easily, more quickly, and without the, the struggle. So when it comes to New Year's resolutions, mostly they're made from the intellect. People think about, oh, how they'd like to be better. And then they make a list and then they say, these are my resolutions. I'm going to do this and this. But they're not really committed to it. It's just their intellect coming up with a list of things that they think they should be doing or not doing. And of course, they struggle with it a little bit. And by like say, by the time you're you know into spring, well, that's all gone. Yeah. You know, that's all gone away, and you're back to the real world, living it the way you are because that's the way you are. Yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. Uh, you have to have that intent from a fundamental place. So first, before you can do that, you have to find that fundamental place. You know, that's the, that's like step one. And in order to find that, that's that place, you probably, well, at least the, the, the most typical way to start it, go about that is with meditation. That's kind of the typical tool for finding that center of yourself is you learn to meditate. And the reason that's the, the kind of the standard tool is because meditation is a discipline where you practice making your mind do what you want it to do, mm. taking control of your mind, not just kind of, you know, letting your fear run things for you, but, but you taking charge of your awareness and your mind, owning it. It's mental discipline that you're learning so that you can sit quietly and not have a stray thought come into your mind, period, for as long as you like. That's discipline. Most people, they sit for about 10 seconds before <laughs> the first thought comes into their mind. And you know that's the way I was when I first started meditating. Well, it's not quite true, but that's typical <laughs> for people. First time I meditated, first time in my life was when a guy, when uh, I got my mantra from the guy selling mantras, you know, um, TM, Transcendental Meditation, folks. My mind disappeared for, for almost an hour. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't even know that five or 10 minutes had gone by. I just disappeared altogether, my first meditation. But anyway, uh, typically, people in seconds have thoughts come through. And of course, the meditation uh, instructor will say, well, just put that gently, put that thought out of your mind and just go back to being empty, to saying your mantra or, you know, focusing on your breathing or whatever it is you do for meditation. And people will do that. And within 10 seconds, another thought comes and so on. And pretty soon they're saying, I just can't do this. But that's not true. You can do it. You just have to keep practicing to learn that discipline to have your mind do what you want it to do. So that if you want to spend some time, you know, healing someone, well, you can put all your mental energy on that. Everything else just disappears and you can put all your mental energy on that. Because if you're trying to heal someone and every 10 seconds, your thoughts are flying around this way and that way, they're not going to be able to put much power in it. It's not going to be a strong, you know, um, you're not going to strongly affect the future probability. So that's what I mean by, by focus. You know, you have to have a, and that's all part of intent. See, intent, as you say, it is part of that. It's focus. It's having, you know, it's being sincere, really wanting the thing to happen. It's clarity and it's discipline in your mind so that you can get all of your mental energy working together at the same time, rather than just bits and pieces of it that pays attention for three seconds and then disappears somewhere else and then comes back and you get another second and your mind's just flitting around all the time. That doesn't produce much power. 
that's the way most of us live though day to day our minds are kind of flipping and flying around all over and that's uh, that's why people have problems also doing um intuitive things paranormal things getting data out of databases uh you know being aware at that intuitive level takes some mental discipline you have to be able to empty your mind and then open it to information and that requires your mind not to be flitting all over the place so again if you do paranormal classically people first learn to meditate I see you got a little friend who wants to get in the picture. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. she's she's enjoying your voice. I think uh -huh. <laughs> this sort of happened last time too, but she, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the difference, you know. When we say, you know, you have to have an intent, not a, you know, not a wish or or uh, something like that. But that's what we mean, and it's not necessarily a simple thing for most people to do because you have to practice. You know, people who are good at controlling their mind of, and I say controlling it, it's, it's more of just being disciplined. So their mind and they are all on the same tune. Their mind isn't just flapping around loose. Um, they've been doing this for decades. You know, it isn't something that is trivial. On the other hand, if you work at it for say, three months, you'll be probably two or 300% better than you were when you first started. It doesn't take that long to get results that will you know, have a, a serious effect. So don't let me frighten people away by saying, oh yeah, okay, a decade from now, you know, I'll, I'll be able to grow up, but <laughs> no, it's not like that. It doesn't take that long, just a few months, you will, you will go from that you know, three seconds to maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. And that's, that's a lot. That's quite a bit. So, and that's enough to really have an effect. If you put that effect on changing your probable future or someone else's probable future for 10 or 15 minutes, well, you can be very effective in that much time. So it doesn't take that long to do that. Now there's a, there's another pathway that I've come up with just a year ago, actually. And that is using your imagination. You can lead with your imagination. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to have discipline. If your imagination is flitting all over the place, then the, you're not gonna put much power into it. But you can practice with just imagining things in detail in all five senses to where you can start some imaginary adventure and really get into it to the point that the adventure just takes place all by itself it just starts to you know unravel as you experience it well when you're doing that then you're basically out of body you may not know that but that's basically in the same state as an out of body where you're not making up the you know what's happening you're just letting it happen and the system is sending you a data stream that's defining what's happening. And from there, you can go on and go other places or heal or do whatever else you want. You're there already. So that way you don't even learn, have to learn how to meditate first, but you do have to practice with your imagination to where you can get into a story, into something going on with multi senses to the point that you've you let go of the fact that you're playing all the parts. In other words, that you're making it up and you're not making it up anymore. It's just happening all by itself. It just happens. That's again, a matter of learning how to let go and be open. You see, it's just a different path rather than taking the meditation path. It's the practice with your imagination until, th until whatever you imagine takes on a life of its own or practice with meditation and you know earn the earn the discipline through practice so those are two different ways that uh, you can approach the same thing right yeah the the uh the using your imagination takes less discipline <clears throat> it 
kind of puts you in that space where that works without you actually having to learn a lot of discipline. The discipline comes from doing it often enough that you can stay with it. You're not jumping in and out of the story. Your mind stays, you know, into the into the details of the story and that it's not a, a superficial connection like visual only. It's a deep connection. It's visual, it's hearing, it's feeling, it's smell, it's taste, it's everything. That helps hold you there a lot, a lot more strongly. But now that takes practice too. Most people don't have an imagination, you know, in in all their senses. So you have to sit down and just practice that. But it's a different way, a different approach that uh, will take you basically the same, the same place. Getting to getting to know your own consciousness, becoming aware of who you are as consciousness. And then you can start doing all the things that, that occur over on the intuitive side, which is all the paranormal things where information just comes. It's beyond rational. It's not rational. You don't figure things out there. You just have a question or you have a need that is in your intent that there's an answer. And at first, you probably aren't too sure whether that answer is just you know, real or not real, but over time, if you do it and do it and keep doing it, you will find that there's a difference between when it's real, I mean, when it, when it works, when you get information that you couldn't possibly know, and it checks out, that is real information. And you slowly build up your confidence in that what you're doing gathers real information. And the more confidence you have, the easier and easier it gets. You know, because the thing that, that gets in the way is your intellect who says, nah, that could, that's not possible. You just made that up. It's the intellect that wants to crash in and assess it. And of course, it can't assess it because it's not logical. It's beyond logic. It's just intuitive. And you have to practice it to the point that your confidence builds by doing things that are evidential, gathering information that you don't know checking it out to see whether it's right or wrong you know like remote viewing you know that's a good place to start you know and healing's easy too you know that's an easy thing to do but you just play with it and have fun and learn and grow and practice and practice and sooner or later it's just a part of your life you live that way you live in that intuitive space because that intuitive space is more functional than your intellectual space. Your intellectual space is very narrow. It just does these things, these few things, and it doesn't even do them very well. <laughs> Whereas your, in, your intuitive space is much broader and wider and deeper. It can do almost everything. There's, there's, uh, it, it, uh, it skips steps. It takes you right to the answer rather than having to figure out, well, because of this, that, and then because of that, the other thing. And you know, instead of having to lead logically step by step, you just go directly to the answer. And again, with years of practice, you build confidence that when you're in that state that feels right, you get good information that you can take to the bank, that you can rely on. And eventually you find out that that intuitive channel is more accurate and more reliable than your intellect because your intellect never has enough information to really be logical. If you're going to be logical, you need a huge amount of information before you can nail something down to it has to be this way. You need to know a lot. And for the most part, we don't know a whole lot. We're guessing most of the time. You know, we have bits and pieces of information and we guess. So it's good to spend the years required to develop that intuitive side because it's smarter and quicker than your intellect. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, even when you are in a normal waking state and you're, in, you're, you know, you're not someplace else, you're here doing things, anything that's complex, anything that has you know, more than just a couple of steps in it, 
or that requires special what uh, even muscle control you know doing it intuitively is much better and much more accurate and much more consistent than trying to do it intellectually any athlete will tell you that the game is 90 percent mental and an athlete doesn't sit and think about how his arms should be and you know what he should do next and where his feet are if he's thinking about those things and he isn't very good at whatever it is he's trying to do all that stuff has to be intuitive it has to just happen when you touch type you don't think about where's the t where's the e you know it's not intellectual you just do it and your fingers just magically move and hit the right key at the right time in the right sequence because that's you're in intuitive space you see so uh, everything that you do no matter what it is from you know writing checks in your from your checkbook or adding up numbers or anything else you will do it better if you are in an intuitive space and quicker mm -hmm. you know we have uh what do they call them savants mm -hmm. that uh if you say what's the you know the cube root of 6942 they'll tell you <laughs> without thinking about it and the way they do it is they've they've learned to do that intuitively they just get the right answer even complex things like uh you know uh, what's the next prime number after such and such what's the next prime number and that may have you know 37 digits in it and they'll just read them right off no they're not calculating in their head they're not fast at math they just see the picture of the digits and they just say them as one comes by they say it you know oh, it's six and then two then three then five then seven seven then two then four then nine then a zero then a six and they just read those off for you know 20 digits and sure enough that's the first 20 digits of the next prime number how do they do that and what's interesting is the people who can do that, these savants, often are, um, what's the word? They are um, autistic. I was going to say, have, that wasn't sure have some other a... kind of, of yeah. other kind of issue that makes them not functional, right? Like the rest of us, not functional in the normal objective space so because they're not functional in that space they start to develop the intuitive side and then they start to realize that oh i get this information i guess really useful you know it means something and then they gain confidence and eventually they do amazing things so it's their lack of the ability to function in normal space that, that that some of them not all i mean it has to be a person who's generally bright and who you know wants to move on to the next thing and do things and you know it's, it's somebody who's trying to deal and make as much as they can of what they've got so that's not everyone but those people can do very amazing things because they develop their intuitive space and if if anybody wants to learn how to do cube roots you know instantly you just have to practice that intuitive thing you know everything we do if you've ever thrown a football or a baseball the fact that you can catch a ball isn't because you your intellect tells you where to go and where to put your hands if your intellect's doing it you probably almost never catch the ball <laughs> it's because through practice your intuition tells you where to move, where to put your hands, and you can do that even while you're running, you know, and stick that mid out there and grab that ball. It's not that hard. Any six-year-old kid can learn that. They get better when they're 10 years old, but you practice to the point that it becomes intuitive. The very first time you try to catch that ball when you're, what, two or three years old and somebody's tossing you a little ball, it's, you know, it's, it's your intellect. Oh, I need to grab it with my hands. And your intellect's in charge. And you're very poor at it. <laughs> so it's only until you get that into an intuitive space that you can do it well. And that's true with everything in your life 
that's not trivial. Trivial things you can you can figure out with logic because you have enough information because they're trivial. Things that aren't trivial, which is almost everything else, you know, life is not trivial. Life is complex. Life has thousands of variables, and you don't know what all those variables are doing. Those things you can only accurately assess through that intuitive channel. So it's really worth developing. And you see, it's that same intuitive space that allows you to make a resolution that succeeds, that really changes you. You lose the 50 pounds, you stop smoking, you whatever, you know, get a better job, whatever it is you want to do, because you start putting positive mental energy into that, which starts manipulating the probabilities in the future to come out that way. So it just works. And depending on how much you're trying to move that probability, it may take some time. You may have to put that thought energy into it, not just once, but many, many times. But still, it, it'll it work. Whereas throwing a dime in the wishing well and wishing with your intellect that you know something good would happen is close to useless. <laughs> it all moves future probability, but not by much, just by a, you know, a little bit. Whereas a strong, powerful mind can move probabilities a lot and things happen. Right. So that's the, you know, New Year's Eve is a, is a time people make resolutions. You know, how is the next year going to be better than the last year? Right. And you can't tell what other people are going to do. So the only thing you can do is change yourself. Okay. So what are you going to change? You know, and it's not so much about your behavior as it is about what's, you know, the little man inside, right? With all the, with all the levers that makes you walk and talk. <laughs> it's who you really are. It's that thing inside that, uh, that's where the change has to take place at the core of you. Otherwise, it's not a real change. Right. It's just a change in your image. You're changing your image. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to be more fun next year. I'm going to laugh and be more social and go out and meet more people, not just stay in my room all the time. Okay, well, that's a good thought, but it won't happen if it's intellectual. Because every time you have an opportunity to go out and be more social, you'll find a good reason why it's not a good time now. Hmm. You know, and you'll put it off and put it off and then it'll be the next January and you'll be making the same resolution again. But if you really want to, you'll do it. So that's the key. Find, find that, that person that is authentic, that is inside you, full of fear, full of ego, you know, and, and full of beliefs and start to take charge. Start, you know, start taking charge of it. That's a life's work. That's why we're here. It's not like you have to do that, you know, in a year. That's something you work on all the rest of your life and then all the rest of the next life and all the rest of the life after that. That's what we're here for. So you start from wherever you are and get as much done as you can and then you get to work on it so on. So there's no Let's point. Go back to your last on. thought about how it's about um See, okay. So when I think of New Year's resolutions, I know I know that a lot now is about quality of life instead of um, these things that we need to achieve. Um, but when I thought of, you know, whether it was losing weight, it, if I focused on losing weight, that had so many other issues with it. But if I focused mm -hmm. on my health, and well-being if i put it in a sense of like two years ago when i decided that movement is really important so i just started walking <laughs> and i got to the point where it you know it wasn't even a challenge it was like you get up you do a warm-up you go for a walk then you come back and do the rest of your day but for me, it was 
it became more about feeling good and that feeling good feeling, you know, encouraging it to continue. Um, so a lot of the resolutions seem to be, I don't know, goal oriented or. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, it's not the goal. Yeah. Yeah, the real value isn't in meeting the goal. Right. The value is in the, is in the journey, not the destination. Right. And it's interesting is that you take a thing like walking, okay, movement. I want to move. I need to exercise. I need to get out and do things, you know, and you don't have any idea how something like that, if you really do it at the V level, will change your entire life. Yeah. You see, it's not, you think, well, that's just about moving. That's all. Okay. I'm going to move. That'll be healthier and whatever. But the point is, it's that's just the beginning. Yeah. You know, you you do that moving and you walk, and it not only helps you get healthier, but all the rest of your life starts to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, your relationships are better, your connections, your, you know, your just your whole world will change. Yeah. And that's the thing that people don't see. And and it's not, you know, just walking. Right. But had you picked something else, some other kind of thing, and become authentic and do it, you'll find your whole life will start to change just because you're approaching life differently now. You're not just same old, same old. Yeah, I do this because that's what I do, and I did it yesterday, so I'm going to do it today. And when you live your life like that, you get in a rut, and that rut becomes almost unchangeable and nothing new happens and your relationships aren't good and your even your friendships aren't all that good you know and everything just mediocre just getting along because that's what you are in your mind is mediocre just getting along but just the fact if i'm going to go out and do something i'm going to be something i'm going to be a walker i'm going to get exercise i'm going to go out and do this and i know it's good and you just do it with nothing, not like, oh, this is going to fix my relationships, or this is going to, you know, no, you don't have any of that. You just do it. Just any one thing you do that is positive, and you're doing it just because you want to, and it's a good thing to do, that will change your life. Yeah. You know, you could get into martial arts, or you could get into painting, or you know, it doesn't matter what it is that you get into. You can get into things, but if you really throw yourself into it, then it will affect everything in your life. It's, um, you know, it's hard for people to see that perspective, that just one little thing like walking, you know, or being nicer to people because you really care about people, you know, just trying to do that. That's a learn from now on. I'm not going to be just concerned about what's in it for me. And am I going to get something out of it? And, you know, that sort of thing. You're just going to give. You're going to help. You're going to be part of other people's solutions. And you're just going to do that because that's what you want to be. Not because you think that's a good thing to be, because that'll crash and burn. It's what you want to be. And you just do it. And it'll change your life. Yeah. Any of those things do. I mean, everything starts getting better. It changes your attitude. It changes your perspective. You know, it's this in your world around you, it's the same old data stream in the sense that just yes, you live in the same place, you know, you still have the friends you had before, you know, and, and you know, you still have your cat, you know, you're, everything, you know, most of your environment's the same, mm -hmm. but the way you interpret that environment changes. Right. You don't, you see it in a different perspective now. And some parts that you ignored entirely so become more important. And other parts that were oh so important start to be seen as dross, things you could drop and let go of. And it just changes you. So yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be walking or anything in particular, but it, you just need to be real, be authentic and go be something. Don't just float along on on whatever's happening to you. You know, that's that's a sure way to get nowhere. Yeah. 
time will go by and you'll get older, but you really won't get anywhere. It'll be like frustrating. It'll be struggle, always struggling, struggling. Oh, if I could just get through this, that would be better. But it never is. You get through this and better for a week or two, and then it's back to the same thing. And that's because you haven't changed. You're expecting that life out there to change you. And that life out there just is the way it is. You need to change yourself so that, such that that life out there becomes a lot more positive. Otherwise, you're stuck in a rut and all you see is the same old junk that you've been seeing forever and it's all dull and it's all not very meaningful and you get tired of it and then you get depressed, uh, you know, and you go through these cycles and uh, then you get your intellect to try to get you out of the depression. So you act, oh, fun, and then, you know, you're going to do this and you go out with your friends and then, but you know, in a month or so, you're still depressed because that's really the way you are. And that was just your intellect, which didn't mean much. So, yeah, that's the way most people live their life and they get stuck in that rut. That is a, that's a problem. Yeah. When you really get out and engage life, it's different. And everything begins to change just based on a simple thing like getting up every morning and going for a walk things will change. Your life will change. So, yeah. People don't really believe that until they do it. Right. And it wasn't easy. <laughs> like there were definitely times where it was just like hard, but it's like, no, I enjoy this. I enjoy getting out and meeting other people. I enjoy walking and on the lake. And I just, I enjoy the whole process. I just, yeah, it, it's interesting how something simple, although <laughs> there might be some people that don't think that 10 miles or, you know, <laughs> the marathon is simple, but yeah. it's, it's, I mean, you I obviously had to build up to that, but it just became something I enjoyed. Like if I don't do it, I feel anxious. Like there's, I'm missing something. Mm hmm Right. It's like, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, also the priority changes. Right. You know, because, all right, it's really cold outside, but that's not going to stop you. No. Oh, it's, you know, it's this or it's that, or it's inconvenient. Uh, well, that's not going to stop you. You start rearranging other things in your life to feed the positive thing. And pretty soon that positive thing takes over all the, all the rest of your life too. No, and you don't have to walk 10 miles. You can walk, you know, three miles or two miles. That's fine. It's not, it's not how long you do it isn't the point. It's that you do it and that you spend enough time doing it that you have other things come into your, you allow for other things to come into your reality. Right. Other things that just aren't, aren't the same old, same old thing. Now you're in a mix that could be almost anything. There's lots of uncertainty. Who am I going to run into when I walk? You know, lots of uncertainty. And within that uncertainty, the system can do the magic that you need to get you to meet people or realize things or just see things different. It doesn't have to be meeting people. It could be just a perspective on things can change. Because when you're walking, you're actually meditating at the same time. The walk becomes another form of meditation. Definitely. It's a, it is a meditation. All right. Your eyes are open and you know, you, you see things and you interact with people. You're, it, but it's an active meditation. Yes. And it, it heals you in ways that have nothing to do with your health. You know, your physical health. It also becomes healing in a mental space. But if you just walk, let's say a hundred yards, well, that's not enough <laughs> to really give you good smattering of new things that can happen to you. Right. You know, so you have to, you have to uh, do things. And let's say you only have one leg, so walking isn't a good thing, or you have arthritis. That's fine. You can still go out. Find a place in a park, you know, at an interchange where, 
walkways go this way and that way or whatever and sit down on a bench if you can get that far to the park you don't have to walk long distances go just go sit and pay attention and see who's there and pretty soon you'll start making friends because there'll be people who come by that bench every day and the first 20 times you see him it'll just be hello <laughs> and then after about the 10th time is nice to see you again you know have a nice day and then eventually they'll stop and chat with you and just stuff will happen you know little children that play there well eventually they'll kick the ball and it'll come over to you and you'll catch it and you'll send it back to them and you'll interact life will connect with you in ways and if you don't get out of the rut that can't happen right and if you go out there looking for it all right now i'm sitting on my bench now i just wait for something interesting to happen then it won't happen either <laughs> because now it's your intellect again trying to do something you just have to be and be open and connect to whatever's there and take it as it comes and it may be a year before it gets interesting that's okay you just have to enjoy it enjoy the fresh air or enjoy you know the paints enjoy whatever it is that that you like doing you know volunteer for something you know go down to your local library and start a little group where you read stories to children you know every Saturday afternoon you know that sort of thing there's lots of things you can do that will get you out of your rut and put you in a space where stuff can happen and when you just get out there and let the stuff happen because now you're open to that stuff you're paying attention to it you're not sitting around thinking oh woe is me nothing ever happens to me because then it won't you're there you're open you're a part of the space you're a part of that scene and do that you know whether it's volunteering or whatever and your life will start to change not just in that way but in all sorts of ways right. yes that's that is a that's kind of a way out of the same old same old you know things going on and then the depression and the image and more depression and you just get kind of fed up with life and don't see much point in anything and you're not learning you're not growing but you know and you try to do those things but they don't work because you're really trying them because you think you should not because you really want to at a deep level and yes that's you got to break out somehow by just getting putting yourself in a space where there are other people yeah whether it's walking or sitting or volunteering or whatever so if you do paint well that's not so much other people but if you do paint Take your painting someplace. After you paint a bunch of them, take them out, put them up somewhere. Even if it's just an easel you put up in the park, you know, let people see what your painting are. Somehow you have to connect with people. Yeah. If you don't connect with people, then not too much happens. You can also connect with animals. You can go sit in the park and talk to the squirrels mm -hmm. and work up a good relationship with the pigeons if you bring a few breadcrumbs with you. And they will recognize you when you come. And those squirrels will come down out of that tree to walk over to you and get a snack, you know, if you do it regularly. But people are really more satisfying. Animals are easier. People are a little more challenging, but there's more, there's more there to it. Because we're a people and interacting with our own kind is a very important thing for us to do. That's where most of the lessons come from. That's where most of the growth comes from. So that would be a maybe a, a resolution for the next year is just not to be any particular thing but just be right. be authentic find something to do that gets you out of your rut interact with other people not because you're expecting this to happen or that to happen oh i know i'll go interact and i'll find a new girlfriend or a boyfriend or I'll get a new job that won't work that's all your intellect you need to just be in those places be open be a part of it be part of that space so when you walk you were part of that walking space and you were open to the people who were there and the things that were there and you got to know it you got to know the traffic you got to know the people you got to know the ducks that were always swimming in the pond or the 
birds that would do this or that. You know what it's like in the springtime. You know what it's like in the winter. It becomes a part of you. You're part of that space. And they all know you. You know, even those birds and things, they know you because you walk there every day and you know them. And being a part of that larger thing is positive and that will help heal you. That will help put the rest of your life together. So it's not you're going there for a purpose to meet new friends and do things. That won't work. Just be who you are and exist in a space that's occupied with others. And let stuff happen, however it happens. That's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the way it works. Yeah. So maybe that'll be helpful to some people, but it's, you know, that's kind of the secret. You don't have to walk 10 miles to get there, but you <laughs> do have to get out of the rut and go out and just be in a space that includes others. And you're like with walking, it's not that many others. It's not like you're going to the mall, you know, where there's hundreds of others, but you're, you're walking. You're only going to walk by 10 or 15, maybe 20 people. Oh, no. where you walk. <laughs> yeah. no. I'm in the beaches in Toronto with a boardwalk. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot lots, of people to come. Lots of people. Yeah. Okay. That's almost like being at the Especially mall. In the isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. So yeah, it, uh, it can be almost anything. Yeah. It just, it's just being open. Yeah. Open up yourself to the reality, to whatever happens. And then it's letting it happen. And if nothing happens, particularly in the first six months, well, it's okay. Just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing it. Put yourself in a space where the larger kinds of system can connect you with people that you'd like to be connected with. Yeah. Now, where there's lots of uncertainty about who you're going to see and how you're going to meet them and whatever. Mm. Yeah. It's... I it's almost like finding a purpose. It's like it, walking isn't necessarily my purpose, but it found it allowed for me just to be more open and expansive and really just finding ways to enjoy it because it was, you know, again, it, I have a beautiful area. So, you know, the lakes there, there's sand and snow and ice and, <laughs> and everything else that comes with canada but um yeah it's just you're right you certainly meet a lot of the same people and then there's a lot of new people that you see and stuff and mm -hmm. it just it's a, no, it you become a, a way of being it just yeah, it, you can become a part of that space you and that space get to know each other and all the things that are in it and just walk there you kind of have a feeling after the hundredth time you've walked there this is my space I belong here. And you feel that way. It is your space and you belong. So a lot, it's a lot of other people's space too. And that's okay. You don't mind sharing your space, <laughs> but you feel comfortable in that this is your space. You're there. You're familiar with every tree, everything that's along there, you know, every little piece of it is, is you're, you're aware of it. And you see how it changes if it changes. <laughs> That's all it takes. It's simple. So maybe this is about authentically being in 2023. <laughs> Use I like the intuition. That's obviously something I built up over a long period of time. But yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's just allowing us to find our our place, I guess, find our tribe, find our space, find us. And you won't find that if you are so focused on yourself right. all the time. Woe is me. I'm struggling. You know, nothing really good ever happens to me. I never meet anybody that's really good. And you know, the, all my relationships turn to dust and when you're in that kind of a rut of life, mm -hmm. then none of that seems to be available to you. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I think this has been a really good show. I think there's been, I think there's a few things there that people can grab onto and, you know, make some authentic, authentic choices that uh, allow us to have a new year. <laughs> I guess, you know, when people think of the new year, they think of, I don't know, a new beginning, a new opportunity to make a shift. And if that's what people are thinking, mm -hmm. then, you know, just do it authentically from our, our inner being and use our intuition and find a way to be. And it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. You know, no. it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to go back to school and learn to be a brain surgeon. You know, it doesn't <laughs> have to be. Unless you really want to. <laughs> yeah, unless you really want to. But it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that happens to your life and bingo, your life changes. You know, it's not like that. I mean, it can be like that, but that's that's one in, you know, 100,000 or something. It's not like that it's only like that on television you know, in the movies it's like that right you're just walking down the street and you know such and such you know mr wonderful happens or this happens or but that's not the way real life is real life is you have to go out and be positive in your space you know you can't say all right i'm gonna walk you talk me into it i hate it but i'm gonna do it <laughs> and wait until something good happens to me yeah. that isn't going to work you have to you have to be a part of that space really join it you know be a part of it and that doesn't happen quickly you probably didn't feel like you were part of that space until you'd walk that same trail you know 50 60 100 times and then you start to feel like it's yours this is my space i walk here you know and i share it and it takes a while to do that. But, you know, walking's just a, just one of hundreds of things <laughs> that, you could, that you could do. Yes. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It does have to take enough time to allow things to happen and to allow you to own the space. Yeah. Could be in a mall in the wintertime. You know, you might, you might walk around in a mall or whatever, but Nature provides some neat benefits if you're out in nature. It's nice because nature is always uh, <clears throat> relaxing and a, kind of a fun place to be. But then that depends, I guess, on the individual. You know? Definitely. All right. Well, I think, again, great show. I think we've, yeah, I think it's a good start for people, so. You've been listening to News for the Heart. We've been getting to the heart of what matters with Tom Campbell and being authentic in 2023 with setting intuitive intentions. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. As Thank always, you, we'll be back next month and it'll all be all about love or something <laughs> for love month. It is always all about love. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tom.